The Bradley Fighting Vehicle is an American fighting vehicle platform manufactured by BAE Systems Land and Armaments, formerly United Defense. It was named after U.S. General Omar Bradley. The Bradley is designed to transport infantry or scouts with armor protection while providing covering fire to suppress enemy troops and armored vehicles. There are several Bradley variants, including the M2 Bradley Infantry Fighting Vehicle and the M3 Bradley Cavalry Fighting Vehicle. The M2 holds a crew of three, a commander, a gunner and a driver, as well as six fully equipped soldiers. The M3 mainly conducts scout missions and carries two scouts in addition to the regular crew of three, with space for additional tow missiles. Red River Army Depot, Texarkana, Texas is the site center of industrial technical excellence for the maintenance and repair of the Bradley system. Design The Bradley was developed largely in response to the Soviet BMP family of infantry fighting vehicles, and to serve as both an armored personal carrier and a tank killer. One specific design requirement was that it should be as fast as the then new M1 Abrams main battle tank so that they could maintain formations while moving. Armament The M2 Permeter III's primary armament is a 25mm cannon which fires up to 200 rounds per minute and is accurate up to 2500 AM, depending on the ammunition used. It is also armed with twin missile launchers for tow anti tank missiles. The missiles, capable of destroying most tanks out to a maximum range of 3,750 meters, can only be fired while the vehicle is stationary. The Bradley also carries a coaxial 7.62mm medium machine gun, located to the right of the 25mm chain gun. Primary, the Bradley is equipped with the M242 25mm chain gun as its main weapon. The M242 has a single barrel with an integrated dual feed mechanism and remote feed selection. The gun contains ammunition in two ready boxes of 70 rounds and 230 rounds each for a total of 300 ready rounds and carries 600 rounds in storage or 1200 stowed rounds. The two ready boxes allow a selectable mix of rounds such as the M791 APDST Treza and M792 HEIT Treza rounds. The tungsten APDST rounds proved highly effective in Desert Storm being capable of knocking out many Iraqi vehicles including several kills on T-55 tanks. There have even been reports of kills against Iraqi T-72 tanks at close range. Subsequent ammunition developments resulted in the M919 APFSDST round, which contains a fin depleted uranium penetrator similar in concept to armor-piercing munitions used in modern tanks. The M919 was used in combat during the 2003 invasion phase of Operation Iraqi Freedom. Secondary, it is also armed with a M240C machine gun mounted coaxially to the M242, with 2,200 rounds of 7.62mm ammunition. For engaging heavier targets, the Bradley has a tow missile system on board, which was changed to fire tow 2 missiles, from the M2A1 model onwards. M2 infantry Bradleys also have firing ports for a number of M231 firing port weapons, providing a means for the occupants to fire from within the vehicle and replacing the top side gunners on the M113 based armored cavalry assault vehicles, though the M231 is rarely employed. Initial variants carried six in total, but the side ports were plated over with a new armor configuration on the A2 and A3 variants leaving only the two rear-facing mounts in the loading ramp. No versions of the M3 CFV carry firing port weapons, though early versions had all six firing port mounts fitted and plated over, while newer versions retain the two ramp-mounted firing ports though again, plated over. Countermeasures The use of aluminum armor and the storage of large quantities of ammunition in the vehicle initially raised questions about its combat survivability. Spaced laminate belts and high hardness steel skirts have been added to improve the side protection of later versions, although this increases overall weight to 33 tons. However actual combat operations have not shown the Bradley to be deficient as losses have been few. In friendly fire incidents in Desert Storm, many crew members survived hits that resulted in total losses for lighter U.S. Marine Corps LAV-25 vehicles. All versions are also equipped with two full-barreled smoke grenade launchers on the front of the turret for creating defensive smoke screens, 
and can also be loaded with chaff and flares. Bradley Urban Survival Kit The Bradley Urban Survival Kit is an upgrade similar to the M1 Abrams Task Kit. It decreases the vulnerability of Bradleys in urban threat environments. The kit includes a more powerful spotlight, a wire mesh protector to keep the optics from getting scratched and non-conductive arched strips of nylon that push away fallen electrical wires that would endanger crews, a remote-controlled 5.56mm machine gun on the turret, additional armor on the underside, and a bullet-resistant transparent shield for the commander outside the turret. It also includes sensors and a software package to quickly detect when components are wearing out and simulation software so the gunners could train more realistically. The bus kit adds three tons of weight to the vehicle. Because of this, a major upgrade was planned. Additional upgrades included a stronger 800 horsepower engine, a larger main gun, lighter armor, improved sensors and cameras to give a 360 degree view outside and an improved fire extinguisher system. This system was supposed to enter service in 2012, but the Bradley simply became too heavy and the kit did not make it survivable enough. A newer Busk 3 kit is now available for Bradleys incorporating a blast-proof fuel cell, a blast-resistant driver's seat, a turret survivability system, and an emergency ramp release. This kit was recently installed on 236 M2A3 Bradleys in Korea and is scheduled next to be added to Bradleys of the 4th Infantry Division. Mobility The Bradley is highly capable in cross country open terrain, in accordance with one of the main design objectives of keeping pace with the M1 Abrams main battle tank. The Bradley was initially designed to float by deploying a flotation curtain around the vehicle, allowing it to swim at a speed of 4.5 miles per hour. Later armor upgrades have negated this capability. History, Development One of the early issues that drove the development of the IFV was the need to have a vehicle which could serve in a high-intensity conflict in Europe which was feared might include the use of NBC weapons. To work in such an environment an IFV would have to have a life support system that protected from outside contaminants while allowing the soldiers to fight from inside the vehicle. The earliest specification from 1958, called for a vehicle of no more than 8 tons, mounting a turret with a 20mm autocannon and a 7.62mm machine gun, with sealed firing ports for five infantry gunners. The first U.S. Army IFV design was the XM-734, a modified version of the M113. A commander's cupola and passenger firing ports were added. The second design was the XM-765 armored infantry fighting vehicle, based on the M113A1 chassis. The upper sides of the vehicle were sloped and spaced steel armor plates were added to improve protection. In addition, firing ports for the passengers were added and a M139 20mm cannon was added to the commander's cupola. In 1963 the US and West German governments began work on the MBT-70 design and an IFV companion project was the mechanized infantry combat vehicle. The contract was handed to the Pacific Car and Foundry Company which delivered the XM701 prototype in 1965. The prototypes had the following characteristics, weight of 25 a Euro 27 tons, 425 horsepower diesel engine, a two-man turret with a 20-arm gun and 7.62-arm MG, crew of three plus nine infantry equipped with firing ports, a built-in toilet, Armor that was proof against Soviet 14.5 MMG fire beyond a certain range. A collective and overpressure CBR system. Amphibious. The filtration system provided a shirt leave environment until the passengers dismounted, after that they could not repressurize without fear of contamination, but they could plug their suits into the vehicle's filtration system. The vehicle was 9 FT high, 20 FT long and 10 FT wide. After testing the vehicle was criticized for poor mobility and excessive weight and size it could not be carried aboard a C-130 or a C-141 starlifter. New specifications were written in 1965. In 1967 the public display of the BMP-1 caused additional interest in the MICV-70 program which concluded its studies in 1968. However, Continued disagreements on specifications continued to slow down development. 
At this time the Army looked at two alternate vehicles which could be fielded more quickly. The FMC company had developed an IFV version of the M113 which had a one-man turret mounting a 25-arm gun, a sealed environment, and firing ports. The vehicle weight was 15 tons. The U.S. Army rejected it due to limited mobility which would prevent it from keeping pace with the proposed MBT-70. However, the design was purchased by the Dutch and Belgian governments. The other alternate vehicle was the West German Marder which mounted a 20mm autocannon, two 7.62mm MGs, relatively strong steel armor, and full CBR protection. The U.S. Army rejected it due to it not being amphibious too large and heavy for air transport and too expensive. The MICV program continued on and in 1972 a new request for proposals was issued which was won by FMC and they began construction of the XM723 prototype which was completed in 1973. The XM723 weighed 21 tons, had spaced aluminum armor proof against 14.5 on fire, had a crew of 3 plus 8 infantry, firing ports for the infantry and a one-man turret with a 20-arm gun. The commander sat inside the hull. In order to adapt the XM723 to be usable in a reconnaissance role as well as an IFV the turret was replaced in 1976 with a two-man turret mounting a 25-arm Bushmaster cannon and tow missiles. A two-man turret design put the commander in a position with a better view of the battlefield. The tow missiles would give the vehicle a strong anti-armor capability. The value of anti-tank missiles had been well established in the 1973 Yom Kippur War. There was an added political advantage in that the tow missiles made it an easy assault to Congress as it was a whole new capability not possessed by the M113. We and TRADOC decided to put the tow on the MICV because we realized that if we did not put the tow on the MICV, we would probably never have a MICV. In 1977 the MICV Tarbell II was renamed to XM-2. The Scout version became the XM-3. The U.S. Congress was questioning the development of the XM-2 due to the high losses incurred by BMP-1s in the 1973 war and suggested the development of a more heavily armored vehicle. The Army argued against this due to concerns about cost, weight, and development time. Almost every army you look at is ahead of the American Army, as far as taking care of our infantry. The Russians, are ahead of us, the German, are ahead of us, the Dutch are ahead of us, the French are ahead of us, the Yugoslavians are ahead of us. Almost everybody has a better infantry vehicle than the U.S. Army. We would have been better off in 1963 when we started to just build the MICV immediately. Are we to start over again? My guess is that if you start over again, you will have a 10% increase in effectiveness and 50% increase in cost. In 1977 Congress ordered two new evaluations of the IFV program, one by the GAO and one by the Department of the Army, under General Pat Kreiser. The GAO report was critical of the XM2's height, mobility, complexity, lack of clear doctrinal use, and lack of CBR protection. Based upon this criticism the OMB deleted M2-3 funding from the budget for the 1979 financial year. In 1978 the Kreiser report asserted that the basic design was consistent with doctrine and development of an IFV with superior characteristics would be costly and pose significant developmental risks. An additional study, the IFV-CFV Special Study Group, evaluated whether an improved version of the M113 could be used instead of the M2-3 IFV. Their conclusion was that extensive redesign would be necessary for even marginal improvements in M113 derivatives. In October 1978 Congress reauthorized procurement funds. The XM2-3 passed the Army Systems Acquisition Review Council Milestone 2 review in 1979 and final approval for production came from the Secretary of Defense on February 1, 1980. Production history, the Bradley, named after World War II General Omar Bradley, consists of two types of vehicles, the M2 Infantry Fighting Vehicle and the M3 Cavalry Fighting Vehicle. The M3 CFV was originally planned to be named after General Jacob L. Davis, but it was decided the Bradley name would apply to both, since both vehicles are based on the same chassis. 
The M2 carries a crew of three and a six-man infantry squad. The M3 carries the crew of three and a two-man scout team and additional radios, tow and dragon or javelin missiles. Even after the troubled development history of the Bradley additional problems occurred after production started as described in a book by Air Force Colonel James Burton, which was adapted for the 1998 film The Pentagon Wars starring Kelsey Grammer and Carrie Elwes. Burton advocated the use of comprehensive live fire tests on fully loaded military vehicles to check for survivability. The Army and Navy agreed and established the Joint Live Fire Testing Program in 1984. When testing the Bradley, however, disagreements occurred between Burton and the Aberdeen Proving Grounds Ballistic Research Laboratory, which preferred smaller, more controlled, building block tests. They claimed such limited testing would improve the databases used to model vehicle survivability as opposed to full tests with random shots that would provide a far more accurate picture of its performance under real battlefield conditions, but produce less useful statistical data. In addition, Burton insisted upon a series of overmatch tests in which weapons would be fired at the Bradley that were known to be able to easily penetrate its armor, including Russian ordnance. Burton saw attempts to avoid such tests as dishonest, while the BRL saw them as wasteful, as they already knew the vehicle would fail. The disagreements became so contentious that congressional inquiry resulted. As a result of the tests, additional improvements to vehicle survivability were added. The first combat unit to be equipped with Bradleys, in March 1983, was the 1st Battalion, 41st Infantry, 2nd Armored Division. Several years later, the unit commander, Lieutenant Colonel Franklin W. Trupnell, J.R., became the Army's system manager for the Bradley program. As of May 2000, a total of 6,724 Bradleys had been produced for the U.S. Army. The total cost of the program as of that date was $5.7 billion, and the average unit cost $3.2 million. Combat History During the Gulf War, M2 Bradleys destroyed more Iraqi armored vehicles than the M1 Abrams. A total of 20 Bradleys were lost a Euro 3 by enemy fire and 17 due to friendly fire incidents. Another 12 were damaged. The gunner of one Bradley was killed when his vehicle was hit by Iraqi fire, possibly from an Iraqi BMP-1, during the Battle of 73 Easting. To remedy some problems that were identified as contributing factors in the friendly fire incidents, infrared identification panels and other marking identification measures were added to the Bradleys. In the Iraq War, the Bradley proved somewhat vulnerable to improvised explosive device and rocket-propelled grenade attacks, but casualties were light a euro the doctrine being to allow the crew to escape at the expense of the vehicle. As of 2006, Total losses included 55 Bradleys destroyed and some 700 others damaged. By 2007, the Army had stopped using the M2 Bradley in combat, instead favoring more survivable MRAPs. By the end of the war, about 150 Bradleys had been destroyed. Replacement The U.S. Army first intended to replace the Bradley as part of the future combat systems manned ground vehicles program, which started in 1999 and was cancelled in 2009. In 2010, the Army started the Ground Combat Vehicle Program to replace the Bradley with a GCV infantry fighting vehicle, but the GCV was cancelled in 2014. Informal discussions for the next follow-up effort have been dubbed as the Future Fighting Vehicle, but no official development has commenced. The Army is taking a measured approach to the FFV concept as they study what capabilities they want and what technologies are available and affordable before committing to a future design. As of October 2014, it is largely a science and technology development effort to explore options while pursuing engineering change proposals for existing armored vehicles. Specific details have not been decided on and the Army plans to decide if the FFV program will become an effort to produce actual vehicles, a potential Bradley replacement, or more improvements for the Bradley in 2016. If a clean sheet design is chosen, the FFV program could be started as early as 2019. Various science and technology projects are being studied to see if they are mature enough to be integrated onto a new vehicle, and components developed for the GCV may be worked into other designs.
while groundbreaking technologies are of interest, the Army is seeking things that are economically and physically feasible to produce. Variants, M2 Bradley The M2 Bradley Infantry Fighting Vehicle consists of four variants, the M2, M2A1, M2A2 and M2A3. Their main mission is to provide protected transport of an infantry squad to critical points. Aside from carrying mechanized infantry into close contact with the enemy, the M2 can also provide overwatching fire to dismounting infantrymen. The M2 infantry fighting vehicle also has six external firing ports for the squad M231 firing port weapon in the M2 and M2A1 versions only. Four ports were removed on the sides of the vehicle on the M2A2A3 versions, and only two in the ramp remain. These ports allow passengers to engage the enemy from within the protection of the Bradley vehicle. These firing ports are almost always covered by additional armor kits and it is rare to see a Bradley with them operable. The proper use of M231 FPWs was rare in practice. It is adequately armored to provide protection against small arms fire and artillery, as well as being able to destroy any vehicle on the battlefield using its tow or stinger missiles. M3 Bradley the M3 Bradley Cavalry Fighting Vehicle is virtually identical to the M2 Bradley except that it is equipped as a cavalry scout vehicle. Instead of holding six infantrymen in the payload compartment, it is designed to seat two scouts and hold additional radios and ammunition. Also lacking are the six external firing ports present on the M2 Bradley IFV. M4 Command and Control Vehicle the C-2V is based on the M993 MLRS carrier chassis and is designed to provide an automated tactical command post and operation centers. It was designed to replace the M113-based M577A2 command post carrier. Mass production was cancelled in late 1999. Around 25 vehicles were finally produced for the U.S. Army. Bradley Stinger Fighting Vehicle the BSFV is designed specifically for the carriage and support of a Stinger Manpads team. The Manpads Under Armour Dismounted Stinger Team concept of the BSFV left the operators exposed, so it was replaced by the M6 linebacker, which also retained the dismounted Stinger missile capability. Warhammer Bradley, modified M2A2 ODSs with the tow missile system replaced with a two-tube javelin missile system, and ISU modifications for increased anti-tank lethality, without the need to continually track the target. M6 Linebacker An air defense variant, these vehicles are modified M2A2 ODSs with the tow missile system replaced with a four-tube Stinger missile system. From 2005 Euro 2006, M6 linebackers had their Stinger missile systems removed and were converted to standard M2 Bradley ODS infantry fighting vehicles. M7 Bradley fire support vehicle, the B-Fist has replaced the existing armored fist vehicle platform, the M981 FISTV, in the U.S. Army inventory. The tow UA suite is replaced by target location equipment, integrated with the Bradley ISU site unit. It also carries equipment for use by dismounted observers. There is a hybrid Gpsted reckoning navigation system to robustly provide the vehicle location as a reference point. Bradley Engineer Squad Vehicle The Bradley ESV enables engineer assets to maintain momentum with a main force while conducting engineer and sapper operations. The ESV is equipped with standard combat engineering equipment and can employ unique mission equipment packages for obstacle neutralization. Bradley Battle Command Vehicle The Bradley BCV allows brigade commanders to move around the battlefield away from their command post. The BCV integrates an enhanced command and control communications suite to maintain digital interface with maneuver forces and the tactical operations center. M993 per meter 270 multiple launch rocket system carrier vehicle. The M270 MLRS is composed of two major sections, a M269 launcher loader module mated to M993 carrier vehicle. The M993 carrier vehicle portion is a modified BFE chassis. Black Knight the Black Knight prototype and manned ground combat vehicle being developed by BAE resembles a tank and makes extensive use of components from the Bradley Combat Systems program to reduce costs and simplify maintenance. 
It is also designed to be remotely operated from a BFV commander station while riding mounted, as well as being controllable by dismounted infantry. Turretless Bradley, for the U.S. Army's armored multi-purpose vehicle program to replace the M113, BA offered a variant of the Bradley. The AMPV submission is a turretless Bradley chassis, providing greater cargo space, increased armor, and an upgraded engine and electrical systems. For increased protection, a V-shaped bottom replaces the flat base. The AMPV also has several modular roof sections to adapt to each roll. For fuel efficiency, BA is considered using a hybrid electric drive, similar to their GCV infantry fighting vehicle. It was suggested that surplus Bradleys could be retrofitted into this version. The turretless Bradley competed against General Dynamics Track Striker. BAE said they have the capability to build up to 8 AMPV platforms per day, the same as the Bradley during the height of its production, as both vehicles share the same production line and supply base. A mortar carrier vehicle can be converted from the original Bradley in 40 days. Underbody blast tests demonstrated that AMPV survivability requirements could be met with a Bradley platform. BAE projected their AMPV submission to have similar operating costs to the M113 and lower costs than an M2 Bradley, as the platform's most expensive components are related to the now excluded turret. Operators, a Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, a United States of America, see also, list of modern armored fighting vehicles, references, notes. Further reading, Halberstadt, Hans. Bradley Company. Europa Militaria No. 30. The Crawwood Press, Wiltshire. ISBN A 1 86126 425 9. External links U.S. Army Fact File on M2 Permeter 3 Bradley Fighting Vehicle, Bradley M2 Permeter 3 Information, Army Technology, Bradley Fighting Vehicle Systems Upgrade to A3.